guys, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today we are going to port a KA24DE. Check it out. You guys might remember a couple months back we did a teardown on my high school buddy Tim's cylinder heads. It was a KA24. It was the two valve per cylinder and there was just a lot to go over because nothing actually fit it. And I was able to convince him to do something that it was easy plug and play. I could port it and he can go racing and, um, and that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to port it. Uh, now just know that a lot of these techniques that I'm going to show you on this cylinder head they work for other cylinder heads. They're not just for a KA, it's really for any cylinder head. We are not gonna do a back uh, to back on the flow bench because I'm not trying to add time to this job. I know you guys are gonna freak out about that, right? But I know how to use a flow bench. I know what makes power. I also know what a cylinder head needs. So um, that's what we do to the cylinder heads that we uh, don't do very often, unfortunately. They just don't, they're not gonna get the whole R&D process that some other heads might. Now, uh, some shops might have the time to do all that, but I don't have the extra three to four hours or maybe even more to keep going back and forth on the flow bench. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna port it and I know what works and I'm gonna go from there. This is gonna start off that you need a good grinder. I'm gonna use my Makita GDO603 and the head games super spiral the three quarter burr this is the three quarter burr and uh this is the honey badger of burrs if you really want to like hit somebody near you with metal this is your guy this thing will uh spit metal anywhere around you with probably in a couple feet so uh but it also takes out material very very quickly and it's easy to make shapes with it so uh we have a lot of Kind of large circles in a ka or any cylinder head really and this is going to make that a lot easier here you have the oem port and uh it kind of looks like a heart and we're going to make it more of a heart you can see up there uh in the divider here there is tons of material to play with and uh, this is just a, a rough grind about how we're going to make it look so i made the divider very thin and um change the size here a little bit and drop the light and uh, this is what we're gonna do so let's get at it And how can you know what side you really want to do this from? Well, I would say take the burr in your hand. And if you take the burr in your hand with just two fingers and you just see how naturally this thing goes up and down. And that is pretty much you're going to be your body motion. And if you uh, would try that from this top side, as I was showing you, you have to push to get up here. And what that will do is change the shape. We don't, we, we do want to change the shape here, but we want to make this round and we do not want to make it square or oblong. So this, as you can see, is super easy to do that. So we're gonna make the divider here, divider here, I'm not gonna to touch out here, and then we are going to blend all this in.
Here's the other thing you need to consider is that I'm using a burr that matches the shape. You see how wherever I go, like that radius right there, it follows the shape. And you're making the shape with the shape of the burr. And I think it's super important that you get the correct size. So a lot of guys go to too small of a burr and then they have to recreate this shape and it's really, really hard because, well, because you have to create it. And this way, um, this burr, it just takes out so much material so quickly and it is the shape already. So it just makes the process a lot easier and more consistent. Here's another thing to consider is, at least on the KA, that all the way down here is the short turn. Now, most heads, I would say, always stay away from the short turn from this side. But on this one, I think it's a unique opportunity to be able to widen the short turn from this side. So a lot of guys are gonna be here and they're just gonna make it round when you can make the short turn wider. Sorry guys, I'm trying to focus in on this. So you can make the short turn wider right here and on this side too. And it actually doesn't hurt the turn because the turn is just so mountainous that, um, you know, as long as you don't get crazy here and you just do like a quick shape, you'll be good to go. Short turns, I think, are often overlooked because guys are over here trying to gasket match or um, put larger valves in it when in reality, all of your gains could be in the short turn and resizing the ball. That's why we do a pocket port. The pocket port is 90% of what you're gonna gain in a cylinder head. And uh, oftentimes it's overlooked for something that's stupid and doesn't do anything. But the reality of that story is you can also ruin the cylinder head by touching the short turn. If you lay it back too much or uh, you, you shape it in a, a very bad way, you are going to be in trouble. You're gonna kill the cylinder head, you're gonna kill the flow, and you're never gonna get it back. Like there's no chance, you can't build it back up and you just kind of have to live with it. Now, if you're on off the flow bench, you might be able to find that Achilles heel. I just like to use what I already know. And, um, and that's why I'm showing you and telling you guys that uh, the short turn is a very, very important thing. And the most important thing is to not delay it back too far. And these are the short turns. Now on the top of the short turn, there is this gigantic ridge. So basically it goes flat and then it goes to a ridge and it goes to the turn. Although I've kind of softened these from doing it on the other side. And here is what I was talking about when you can make it wider. So we're gonna make it wider on the short turn into the bowl area on each side. And then we're gonna shape the short turn. Uh, you also notice that this side is higher than this side. And we're gonna keep that shape. We're gonna make it so the air just, um, well, we're just gonna be a DJ. I think it's also important to note that you should always put your finger in it and you're going to put your finger in it you get to learn the different shape and where you might see high spots low spots whatever spot you got and you can correct it with the uh with the burr and you don't have to like just look at it you can feel it and once in a while you are going to get uh, metal in your fingers. I always got metal in my fingers and I pick it out with razor blades, but uh, this is the best way to learn how to grind. You're going to just feel it. You feel the shape and then you can make the shape. All right. So now, now we're at the bowl area. The bowl area is this area right here, all up in here. This is the bowl. And uh, sometimes we call it the pocket, right? Because it's a pocket port. Anyway, this is a full port and uh, we're going to blend everything in that we did on the short turn on the walls here and then we'll do the center. Now, what I don't want you guys to do is if you look over here, you'll see that this area right here wasn't ground. And it's not ground because this right here is a slope. And when it has a slope and it goes into the seat, meaning that this area here is actually bigger than the valve seat. And what I don't want to do is make it even bigger. A lot of the guys think that they need to touch every piece of aluminum and it all has to disappear for it to be right. This is correct. 
if you try to dig this out and you make the whole bowl area too big, you'll ruin what you're trying to do. You're not gonna get it back. You can take it out, but you can't put it back in. And this being the correct size and not too big is uh, the best way you're gonna be able to do that. Here's the best way to think about this. Too small, you know it. Too big, everybody knows it. And I say that because too small, if you're gonna be off here, you're gonna be off small. At least you want to be off small because it will still flow well. But if you make it too big, you're gonna lose flow, you're gonna lose velocity, and you are gonna ruin the cylinder head. So everybody is gonna know because the car won't go. I was using, so you can see, it really doesn't lend itself to having the right radius. Although this radius would probably work. But the wall, um, you know, the rest of the port, it just wouldn't work. And uh, sometimes if you put it in here and it's too small, it'll shake. But the half inch burr is perfect. Half inch burr, I can get everywhere in this whole port that I wanna get. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock the uh, guy boss down and then I'm gonna shape all this because well it absolutely needs it so we're gonna uh, we're gonna keep the outside shape but we're gonna shape all the inside. I'm gonna use this one first because we're gonna knock a lot of material out and I don't want to have the deflection that the six inch will have. Now the six inch is awesome for blending stuff in and uh, especially doing short turns like you really need the extra length but when I'm trying to hog something, I want a shorter burr. Alright guys, admittedly I cheated and I switched over to the Head Games 5 8 Super, I'm sorry, this is a High Helix Burr. The High Helix Burr, um, it is, I took this one out because, well, I just needed to make this wall straight and I needed to take this out quickly, I needed to take the guy balls out quickly and the half inch just wasn't doing it for me because, again, you have to try to make this shape and it's actually a tricky shape because it goes from half of a circle into a a semi-flat wall and you can't really do that you're doing to do a lot of shaping when you use a smaller burr couldn't use the biggest burr but um, I was able to use this one and I also made the floor or I should say it's the roof the roof of the port I also made the roof of the port much flatter so if you go into the stock one the stock one has a lot of bump there right before the guide boss and I was able to remove that from this one because, well, I was just using the right burr. And I also did the walls and now I'm ready to do the floor and the short turns. All right guys, now we're gonna do the short side radius. Now, just like I showed you on the intake side, the exhaust side has this big bump. Now, I know I started grinding here and I was like, oh, I didn't uh, film it. So you see how this thing is like a ledge and it's almost square and then the turn is not a turn. So that's what we have to do here. We have to make this a turn. shape the turn and the problem here is that the turn is so tight 
that you can't really see how like the grinder is hitting the seat. So you can't really make the full turn into here and I have to hit it from both sides. And a lot of times, um, I mean, that happens in certain heads that when you're doing a full port, uh, so basically all I did was I moved the point that was up on the top of the turn, I moved it back. So then when I hit it from the other side, I'll be able to make it a full turn. So we'll just flip the head and get it from the other side. Now this is the short turn area and the ledge is now back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend all this in to the turn. Be careful when you're blending this part in here, uh, and this goes for any cylinder head, that you, you have to be really careful going from this side because you can flatten the turn, and that's exactly what we don't wanna do. We still, again, make a turn. Uh, so you just need to hit the edge and then blend it back into here. Be very delicate here, and then you can go at it here. So now the thing you really need to do is take your finger, put it in there and feel it. You don't want to just look at it and think that it's okay. You really want to put your finger in there, get to know the port and feel for any bumps or whatnot that you need to take out. You'll notice that the grinding marks come to about here on the, in the bowl area. And that's because of the way I did the short turn. Now this is all around up here and I just need to blend it real easily into this. That's why sometimes I'll either start with the bowl or I'll end with the bowl. Uh, and that way I blend everything in. Anytime that I'm actually fine grinding, I'm going to start with the bowl. But when I'm grinding it, when I'm roughing it in, I might start or end depending on the shape. And what I mean by that is I was widening up the short turns quite a bit on this deal. So if I did the bowl, I just feel like I would be going back over it anyway. So I would just start with the runner, go into the short turn, do all that, fix it all up, and then we can move on with it. So you guys see where it didn't hit, and uh, I wanted to just show you that if you use your grinder correctly, you see how it would hit the seat if I were to try to make that angle. You don't want to dig everything out. It's really just not needed. Um, most likely it's already too big and you don't want to make it any bigger. Everything does not need to be touched for you to say you fully ported it. So remember that. And there's no real reason to like stick your burr up like this and just to dig it out. It just, there's no sense there. Consistency and shape matter a whole lot more than touching everything. You guys need to get yourself one of these if you're porting. This is going to help you make sure that you are into the correct size and uh, get yourself a Harbor Freight caliper. For maybe 30 bucks here, you can double check all your work and uh, you don't just willy nilly it. And I can tell you when we go into here, you want it to be in relation to the size of the valve. And so you just want to check your consistency and you really need to check your size because remember I said if this was too big in that area, then you're going to be a problem, right? So you can tell this thing is not really round because this is hitting, this is not. And uh, so you really need to, to know where you are. Now, I would say the maximum you want to be, this is very max, and this probably goes for any cylinder head on the planet, you want to be more than 90% of the size of the valve. All right, guys, simple math here. Let's take the valve. It's 31.3. Now, if you guys are in America, you, this number means almost nothing to you. So what you need to do is divide that by 25.4 and that gives it in inches. So now you have one, two, three, two. And we measured the, this is what the bowl was. So I don't usually give this guy gives it away, but I said we just roughed it in for uh, 1061. So 1.061 divided by um, 1.232 equals, we're at 86% of the size of the valve, which 
will probably get it away for 99% of the heads out there. The final dictation of our bolt size is usually determined at the seat and guide machine. So what we do is we'll uh, put the valve job on it and we see where it's coming in at and we will machine the bowl. Or I should say we machine the throat diameter with that and then blend it in. Um, I want to keep it below 90%. So I might go to like 88%, but we're not going to go much bigger. All right, guys, I got to go finish this head up and it is time to go with you. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I would love to hear from you. Toodles.